Hey Kryptonaires, this is Duraga. Today I'm going to be walking you through a manual installation of Docker on a VPS, along with the actual installation of your pre-node. There are a couple of things before we get started. The first is that Docker does use different information, uh, different installation instructions based on the different versions of uh, Linux that you have or Windows or Mac. Uh, in this case, I'm using the latest version of Ubuntu 20.04, the 64-bit version. It's okay with my uh, VPS. The second thing I'm working off of is the assumption that you have a VPS already, specifically that you have one with the aforementioned Ubuntu 20.04. Uh, we do work, you can install it on other versions. This particular walkthrough is just specifically for Ubuntu. If you have questions about guide, want to have a different setup or a different operating system install, we can talk about it. You can go ahead and ask the mods on the server. I'll show you how to log on to the server itself and how to install Docker and then the node. Uh, finally, I'm assuming that you've already signed up for pre-search account and have filled out the form to join the beta node runners. You've gotten your approval, you have access to your dashboard, and finally your node registration code. If you haven't, check out the links in the pre-search chats channel for the required form. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. What we'll need to begin is going to be the information that was provided to you when you bought your VPS. That'll include your server's IP address, the root password, server name, and a couple of other bits of information there. Um, <clears throat> do note that you can change some of this information on your VPS vendor's client side. Uh, it's beyond the scope of the video though, but feel free to ask myself or any of the server mods for assistance if you have questions about that. Uh, so let's get logged on. Start, we'll need to bring up the command prompt. As you can see on screen, I do already have it up. However, uh, let's go through the basics here. To start on Windows, you will go ahead and hit the uh, start button there, and then you'll just type in CMD. Uh, you'll get command prompt. What you want to do is right click it and run as administrator. Once you've done that, you'll pop, it'll pop up and it'll give you select administrator command prompt right at the top of the screen. If you're on a Mac, just search for the terminal under the Spotlight Search, which is the magnifying glass in the top right of your uh, Mac's uh, top bar. So once we're on the command prompt, uh, this is basically our terminal here, uh, what we're going to do is type in the following, and that's going to be uh, ssh root at, and then you will get the IP address of your uh, server that was provided to you via the uh, email or directly from the client side information from your VPS vendor. In my case, that is going to be here. Now you'll note I attached a tag P5829. Uh, the tag P allows you to change the uh, port that you're connecting to. 5829 is the port that I'm connecting to specifically. This is a requirement from my VPS vendor. Uh, you may not have that. Uh, check your vendor's site for instructions on how to connect to your VPS specifically. It may not be the same as mine. I go with Ethernet servers, uh, and this is a requirement to connect to their systems. It is, uh, again, vendor specific, so do check with your, your vendor if there's anything special that you need to add. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and hit enter. So it's going to ask me for my password. We'll go ahead and set that up. Now, if this is your first time connecting to a terminal, you will be prompted with a notification. Notification will say something along the lines of, uh, do you accept the certificate? Yes, no. Uh, you're going to want to say yes. Basically, it's just saying that it's not signed publicly, which is perfectly fine. This isn't a public server. This is a uh, uh, going to be a node, and it's not necessarily going to be accessible by uh, the general public. We'll continue the rest of this in the next video. All right, now you're going to see your screen load up, uh, similar to what we see here. Welcome to Ubuntu. Kind of gives you all the information. Uh, you're also going to see this uh, root at the name of your server. Uh, then it gives you uh, some extra little symbols there. It just kind of tells you where you're at on the server itself. Uh, now here we're going to pause. Uh, I, I do like to keep a clean install. This is the tech in me. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a directory, uh, a folder, and uh, then we're going to move into that folder, and then we're going to do all the installation uh, necessary to get uh, Docker uh, up and running. So the first thing we're going to do is type in command mkdir. It stands for make directory. We're going to enter a space. We're going to call this new directory Docker. 
Go ahead and hit enter. In my case, as you can see, it's kind of complaining that I've already got a Docker folder uh, in existence. Uh, quite all right. Uh, this, you will just see it go down to the next uh, line. Uh, just indicates that Docker has already been created. So what we're going to do next after that to move into that folder is type in CD, stands for change directory. And we're going to enter Docker. Uh, as you typed it in, or if you typed it a different name, just make sure it fits both uppercase, lowercase. It is important. Now you see that this thing ends in Docker here. It does have the uh, folder name, just kind of indicating that you've moved down uh, a level. Now, the next step here, now that we're in Docker, is to get the Docker program installed. This is where the fun begins. Here's why you should become a Super Bowl member. You get access to everything, plus all the information about nodes. We have a 100% two-week money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose if you don't find us interesting. We are talking about more upcoming node projects that you definitely don't want to miss. We still have a 35% discount code for live running, fall 35. Check it out, you don't want to miss it. Also, a message from the Sensei right here. Check it out. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the correct section. Under installation methods, we're going to set up the repository. Uh, basically, uh, what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and set things up so that we can get the actual install of Docker going. A little bit different than how you uh, may see it on Windows or a Mac. Uh, it uh, does require creating various folders and downloading them from the correct locations to get them up and running. So, first things first, we copy sudo apt-get update. You can type that in or copy and paste it personally. Copy and paste is probably a little easier. Once we do that, we go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to run through its process. Now, do note that some of these commands may not uh, uh, do anything. They'll just immediately complete what they need to do, and you're good to go. Just keep an eye out for this line here. But once it's done, once it hits that, you're ready to enter the next command. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We get the next one down here, and we're going to go ahead and paste it. Go ahead and hit enter. It's going to go through its process. You can see that it finished really quickly. And then the next thing here we're going to download uh, is the Docker's GPG key. I'll be honest, I have no idea what that is. Go ahead and copy that, and then we come through and paste it. Hit enter, and as you can see, it says that I've already got one. I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite it just for the purposes of this guide. Okay, completed immediately. We're gonna scroll down one more time, and uh, this next command sets up what it see. It says here, use the following command to set up a stable repository. Uh, so we're just gonna get this particular version here. We're gonna go ahead and hit copy paste here and enter. And again, immediately it gets everything set up and ready to go. All right, next step here is going to be to install Docker. We're going to once again run that first command that we got. Basically, it's just checking for updates and making sure everything's uh, got what it needs to be able to do the install and run everything that's necessary. And finally, we're doing the next command here. This part is going to be where we get Docker itself installed. Go ahead and paste it. We hit enter. It's going to go through the process. It's going to use some memory. You'll see here that's hard drive memory. We're going to go ahead and hit Y for yes. It's going to download and do its thing. Add a few moments, complete. It's going through. Go ahead and pause here just to let it complete. Okay, so that took less than two minutes to complete uh, entirely, uh, but at this point Ubuntu is installed. Now we've installed Docker, but to ensure that we've got everything running right, we're going to go ahead and run this friendly little command here. It's called sudo docker run hello world. Hello dash world, excuse me. And what we're going to do is just going to go ahead and paste that into our command prompt, our terminal. And we're going to hit enter. Now in your case, it'll go through and download everything it needs. In my case, it's already got it installed, so it just drops it there. It says hello from Docker. It gives you some information about Docker. Um, now that uh, we've done, gotten that all set up and installed, and you've gotten your hello world, 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get the node set up for pre-search. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and go to our uh, dashboard. I guess you get access to, of course, after signing up for the uh, pre-search node beta testers. Uh, fill out the form. You can find that in the pre-search chat room of the CryptoNetters Discord server. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is go ahead and click on this part here. It's a link that says how to run a pre-search node. And what that we're going to do is we're actually looking for a small bit of code here. Um, I'll have to scroll down to step three under setup instructions. We're going to go ahead and copy this whole thing in blue, starting from Docker, going all the way down to pre-search dash node. We're going to go ahead and copy that. In my case, I already have it. What you're going to do next is open up a uh, text document. Basic text is just fine. And you'll see that I have copied in that uh, set, of, set of information here. Uh, what we're going to looking for to do uh, is we're going to go ahead and paste it, and we're going to look for this section here. It says registration underscore code equals dollar sign your registration code here. What we're going to do is go back, go ahead and go back to the dashboard, and you will all have a unique node registration code. Uh, this tells the server how to connect to your account. Make your node yours. So I'm going to go ahead and copy mine. Go ahead and paste it here. I don't mind showing it just because if you do happen to copy it, you are giving me your node and not your own. Uh, I don't mind free nodes, but uh, let's make sure you have your registration code with each one of these. What we're going to do next is from here, we're going to go ahead and copy the entire body of that code. Go ahead and copy it. And then we're going to run this on our server. We go ahead and paste the lot. And then we're going to hit enter. Now it's going to go through the process. And it's going to go ahead and start pulling and downloading information that it needs to get the node running. You'll know it's finished once you get the big blue P as in Paul. Okay, so big blue P. Uh, you did note that it does say, you know, pre-search node gives you the information, say public key, say private key, and now it says that it's listed. So as far as your uh, server is concerned, we are good to go. We're going to go ahead and just type, go ahead and uh, just close the uh, connection, and you're done and good to go. What we're then going to do is go ahead and go to our dashboard. You'll notice I've already got four nodes available. Let me go ahead and reload the page. It's got a fifth one registered for me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look and edit this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the edit button on there. It's a little pencil looking thing. All right. As you can see, I do have the balance required for a pre-search node that is 1,000 free. Uh, you can, of course, buy it here or transfer it from uh, somewhere else on the blockchain. Uh, I've already got mine already set up, as you can see, of course. We're going to go ahead and enter this required number of 1000. And then we're going to go ahead and give it a name. Uh, pretty straightforward. So Very simple, very straightforward. And go ahead and select that it sends me emails whenever my servers disconnect, and it'll be considered a disconnect after five minutes. I'm going to go ahead and hit update, and that will then update my node. My stake will be pending. I'll go ahead and go back to the node list, and you'll see here my available to stake has dropped down a bit. Uh, but you'll also know I do have now five total pre-search nodes. Got a low reliability score that will go up as the node does get used. It's of course got no total searches thus far, and it's earned you know, free. But at this point, that's perfectly okay. It's a brand new node, so everything is as expected. At this point, you have an up-to-date and an up-and-running node. Uh, you're good to go. All you have to do is monitor this, monitor this excuse me, occasionally just to make sure that, uh, you know, if your node goes down, you want to try and come back in and see, how, see why it is. Maybe uh, reconnect to your server, do some troubleshooting. Uh, that is, of course, also beyond the scope of this video. If you do have any questions or, or concerns about your node, if it ever goes down, we do have a lot of chats in our pre-search uh, Discord. 
channel and uh, we do have a lot of uh, folks in there that have dealt with uh, offline nodes at this point and do know how to get them back up and running. Uh, if nothing else, just feel free to talk to the mods and uh, mods are always more than happy to provide a hand wherever we can. Uh, thank you for uh, listening, Kryptonaires, and uh, this has been a guide for setting up your pre-search mode.